encounter, contrition, and mission. Our first reading and our gospel today set forth this tremendous pattern of encounter, contrition, and mission. Every single one of us right now is somewhere in this journey of encounter, contrition, and mission. Let's start with encounter. Both Isaiah and Peter encounter the Lord. Isaiah's encounter is a mystical vision. Peter is on the seashore. The encounter that we have with God is an invitation to always go deeper. My mom is from Trenton, New Jersey. Much of my childhood was spent visiting my granny and grandpa, where they would often take us to the beach, to the seashore. As a young child, we were taught that we could stay in the water on the seashore up to our knees. If we went deeper into the seashore, there needed to be an adult. An aunt, an uncle, a mom, a dad, or a granny and grandpa had to be with us to go deeper into the water. We could fill our buckets, we could search for seashells, we could play in the water in the shallow end. But the deep waters were seen as something dangerous. The same is true in our spiritual life. In fact, the vast majority of Christians spend their whole entire life at the seashore and they never plunge into the depths. It's fun to play in the water. It's risky to go deep. Our Lord Jesus Christ invites Peter to go into the deep. What does Peter do? He automatically puts up resistance. He automatically has excuses of why he should not go into the deep. And yet when he does surrender, which he does, Peter encounters our Lord in the deep. And so will we. The question is whether we'll go deep. Will we commit to spending an hour in silence in the Blessed Sacrament Chapel? Will we accept an invitation to come to daily mass? Will we accept an invitation to pray the daily rosary, to open our Bibles every day? Do we accept the invitation to be people of true encounter? Whenever our spiritual life enters into a plateau, we're in shallow water, and we need to plunge deeper into the recesses of God. Because God is infinite, because God is divine, the depths never end. And thus, no matter where we're at in our spiritual life, we can always encounter him deeper and deeper and deeper. Some of you remember the song by the Bee Gees, How Deep Is Your Love? As odd as it is, it is I'm not going to sing it for you. But it's a great question. And God's response is never-ending. And we're called to plunge into that, to encounter the Lord, and to never stop going deeper. Encounter, contrition, and mission. When we encounter the Lord, what's going to happen is that, and one of the reasons that we're going to resist going deeper is that we then recognize our own brokenness. The deeper you go in the spiritual life, the more you realize that you are weak and broken and a sinner. Sometimes people think the exact opposite should happen. The deeper I go into the spiritual life, well then it should be easier. The deeper I go into the spiritual life, well then all my sins should be taken away. But it's actually often the opposite. The more we are drawn to Christ, the more we realize that we are broken and that we are sinners. If you've ever washed a window in the dark or in the nighttime, 
and the sun comes up the following day and you realize, I did a lousy job washing that window. Or if you've ever washed a glass and then held it up to the light, you're like, got to do that again. The light exposes our brokenness. It exposes our attachments, our attractions, and our addictions to the things of this world. And God wants us to be free. God wants us to be people of contrition. He wants us to be people who turn away from our sins because then we're truly free and we can live. And thus both Isaiah and Peter as soon as they encounter the Lord, what's the first thing they do? Lord, depart from me. I'm a sinful man. Some people live their whole life in that state. Due to their own past experiences, sometimes because of abuse or neglect, whether it be physical or emotional or sexual, some people live their whole life in a cycle of guilt and shame. A cycle of constantly feeling that they are unworthy. And that's not God's desire either. It's God's desire that, yes, that we recognize our brokenness, but also that His grace is enough, that His grace is powerful, that His grace is enters into the depths of our hurt and the depths of our pain and brings us healing and restoration. Once we realize that we're broken and that we are not in control, God is then able to act and move in and with and through us. And that thus moves us into stage three, encounter, contrition, and mission. Once we recognize that we are sinners, God is able to use us. Our pride is shattered, and we now become God's instruments. We become his tools. We become his hands, his feet, his ears. We become his presence. And thus, the last words of that first reading today, where Isaiah is told, where Isaiah says to the Lord, Here I am, Lord. Send me. And where Peter after recognizing the Lord's presence, after confessing his sins, is charged and commissioned by the Lord. Now I will make you a fisher of men. Encounter contrition and mission. Those words of Isaiah, here I am, Lord. Send me. Ask any musician in the church right now. When you meet with a family prior to a funeral, there's three, thought, three songs that will most likely come up as the top three songs that people want at their funeral. Be Not Afraid, On Eagle's Wings, and Here I Am, Lord. There's something about us saying those words, Here I am, Lord, send me. Here I am, Lord, fully available. Here I am, Lord. God calls us to be fishers of men. He calls us to go out of ourselves. And yet, often many of us struggle with this. Some of us might be really good at plunging into the depths of prayer. We might spend hours in the Adoration Chapel, and yet if we aren't going out and changing other people's lives, there's something broken. There's some people that go to adult studies and faith formation classes all the time, and yet they never go out and change the world. There's something broken in that. There's some people who know their own brokenness, and in that brokenness, they're called to then share their lives with others. We are called to be people of mission. If you look what happens to St. Peter, St. Peter goes into the depths. He encounters the Lord. He acknowledges his sinfulness. And then what does God do? He gives an, an overabundance of fish, so much so that that blessing given to Peter can't even be contained by Peter. They have to bring another boat over because the blessings of God are to overflow into other people's lives. 
When we encounter, when we enter into contrition, we are then sent on mission to give the blessing and the depths of God to other people. To allow our blessings to overflow into other people's lives, into other people's boats. Encounter, contrition, and mission. We celebrate this feast, we celebrate this week, the great feast of St. Valentine. For those of you who live in the sacrament of holy matrimony, you'll see this pattern is true in your own relationship. So a great question for all of our married couples this morning. Where are you at in your encounter with your husband or your wife? Are the two of you constantly delving into the deep of each other's lives? Or have you plateaued and settled for the everyday conversation? When was the last time husband and wife truly had conversations going to the depths of their longings, their desires, their dreams, their hopes, and their passions for each other, but also for themselves? Are they willing to risk? Are you willing to risk? Are you willing to go out into the depths? Or is there fear? I will tell you that if husband and wife choose to go into the depths, it's going to lead to contrition. The ways that I haven't been the husband or wife that I'm called to be. And those words, I'm sorry, and those blessed words, I forgive you and still love you, will be spoken. Husband and wife, as they stand at the altar before God, they make promises, promises that they are entering into this relationship freely, promises that they're entering into this relationship faithfully, but promises that they will also be fruitful. Of course, the physical manifestation of that is when a husband and wife are blessed with children. And then that husband and wife are sent on mission. Mission to what? To bring those children to heaven. Later in their lives, the mission of bringing their grandchildren to heaven. But also when two Christians love each other, their love is called to overflow in their acts of charity and mercy to the world. So husband and wives, how are you on mission together as partners to continue to bear spiritual fruit through corporate works of mercy and acts of love to be literally the hands, the heart, the feet, the ears of God in our world. Encounter, contrition, and mission. Let's pray that we will not be filled with fear. But let's pray that we will be people who encounter the Lord who turn to contrition in our sins and are sent on mission. Amen.